All right, troop ten hut. Forward march. Do something. Welcome to Fort Irving. As we begin today, all is quiet at Fort Courage. Vanderbilt, you're dead. Well, there you go. I didn't even see you. Well, now that's the way it goes in the war games game. Oh, she ain't gone. Now, Vanderbilt, be a brave little soldier and lie down. I'm on the game before it even started. Now, don't argue. <laughs> Somehow, it doesn't seem necessary to explain why Vanderbilt didn't see him. As you gather, we're conducting war games. Half the troops are dressed as Indians, and the other half are trying to stop them from infiltrating the fort. Good work, running deer, who go swift like rabbit with thorn and cottontail. Thank you, Big Chief Big Bear. Now, little skunk, you and the other brave, Captain, you stop. I'd like to change my name. He wants to change it to Mighty Skunk Who Make All Braves Tremble. Duffy, you're dead. Who's dead? I knew you were there. Bang, bang! Come on, Duffy, you gotta lie down and play dead. Me! <laughs> there are those who may not be taking this seriously enough. After a bit more F Troop style bungling on both sides, it's time to form up and evaluate the exercise. We got the whole fort captured, Chief, but these guys won't admit it. Actually, Sergeant, I think the war games were about a draw. And since we're a peace loving tribe, we're willing to negotiate a treaty. It takes a big man to do a big thing like that. That's why we call him Big Chief Big Bear. Thank you, running deer, who goes swift like rabbit with thorn and cottontail. That's your Indian name? My friends call me Deer. And he may be taking the whole name thing a little too seriously, because most likely the next time they do this, he'll have a different name. Maybe little men who speak big nonsense out of wrong end. The war games are over, Sergeant. Get all the Indians back in their uniforms. Yes, sir. I mean... <laughs> all right, you Indians. Get a little suits and back into your uniforms. That means you too, dear. You'd think Agarn would have learned by now. But if he did, he wouldn't be Agarn. We've seen this in some other characters on this channel, most notably Dr. Smith on Lost in Space. That character couldn't grow even a little bit because the writing had him locked into a certain mindset, not just on one or two subjects, but from head to toe. It was the same with Frank Burns on M.A.S.H. We established the character to have a certain type of personality, and if that personality changes, softens, or otherwise becomes a little more of a compassionate human, the character doesn't exist anymore. It turns the character into a little more than a foil for everybody else to play off of because he's not allowed to show us any other aspect of himself. We never did get anywhere with Dr. Smith. Frank Burns had some very significant moments where he actually did experience some growth, and not long after that he left the show. It'd take too long to go into detail, but let's take that template and lay it over Corporal Agarn. He's scared of everything and often leaves himself open to jokes like that. But he's fiercely loyal, will stand beside you and risk himself when it's time to do so, and he cares about others. He and O'Rourke have both gone out of their way for someone else like Charlie the Drunk or Miko last episode. We've seen it many times. So even though there are times when the good corporal seems to remain static, we do well to keep in mind that it's only in a couple of areas. He's been allowed to fall in love, get his heart broken, struggled with which local crook to vote for. He's a real person. Once again, I have to hold the writing in this show up as a good example for others to follow. This show did so many things right, I lost count even after I took my shoes off and counted her toes. You savage! You killed my will! <laughs> Looks like Miko taught her a few things. She's thoroughly apologetic. She sort of flipped out because she's upset anyway. It's little Joey Walker. He's been missing from his mother's farm since yesterday. He has? Well, no, don't, don't you worry, Jane. We'll find him. Missing children were a very real fear on the frontier. If a child wandered off and couldn't find their way back, there was a good chance they'd die of thirst before anyone could find them. And then there were the first American tribes that would steal children and raise them as their own. The groups that did this sort of thing didn't confine their kidnapping to white children. When they got the urge to do it, any kid would do as long as it was from another tribe. 
Basically, they were America's original foster care program. The captain tells O'Rourke to organize a search party. Since the guys who were playing the soldiers are already tending to their horses, they can leave immediately. Adults have been saying it for as long as there have been adults. Some kids can sleep through anything. They can't find him, so while they rest, the captain will take another party out. Dobbs, assemble the men. We're going to look for little Joey Walker. Captain Parmenter? Later, Joey. Corporal Agarn is giving orders. No! We'll ride as far as Dribble Creek. I'll take Dobbs and Donaldson. Uh, Corporal Agarn? Yes, sir. This is Joey Walker. I know that, sir. Don't just stand there. Start looking for him. No! The first man to seize Joey Walker fires three shots into the air. Then we'll check our positions from there. <laughs> Joey! All right, man. Dismissed. By the way, the cost of those bullets is coming out of your pay. Joey, what are you doing here in the fort? I've come to enlist in the cavalry. Ah, don't you think you better run along home? Your mother must be worried sick about you, Joe. I'm not going home anymore. I want to be a soldier. Oh, I'm afraid that's not possible, Joey. You're underage. How old do you have to be to join the cavalry? 18. I'm 19. 19 pounds, maybe. Tell him there's also a weight restriction. All right. Hey, Joe, come on. I'll take you home, huh? You don't have to take me home, Sergeant. Here comes my mother now. She's grateful to them for finding Joey, but they explain that they didn't do anything. He was already here. No, he came to the fort to enlist. Yeah, the only thing is, we already got enough troopers that need a nap in the afternoon. <laughs> Sergeant, I don't find that amusing. In fact, I don't find anything about the cavalry amusing. Get your things, Joey. We're going home. But, Mom, I want to be a soldier. Get your things. She's not just against the idea. She's hostile. We'll learn that she has a good reason. Her husband was a cavalry soldier who was killed in a skirmish. Her son is all she has left, so you can't blame her for being a little protective. I hope you won't punish him, Mrs. Walker. There's nothing terrible in a boy wanting to be a soldier. As far as I'm concerned, Captain, I'd rather have a son who wanted to be the town drunk. It's pretty obvious that she blames the cavalry for the loss of her husband, and there's no sense going into all the reasons why her anger is misdirected. Instead, I want to talk just a second about how convincing her performance is. I believe she's ready to scratch their eyes out. As she storms away, O'Rourke asks permission to talk to her one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Mrs. Walker? Yes, Sergeant? I understand how you feel about the cavalry, but uh, I think you're going about this thing all wrong. Well, I don't think you're the one to talk about raising a son, Sergeant, since it's obvious you've never been a mother. I've yeah, never been a canary either, but I know how to sing. In fact, he can hit at least three notes that a canary can't. Do you think taking him home now is going to keep him from running away again? Unless you lock him up, you're going to be looking for him in every cavalry post in this territory. If I don't lock him up, what's the alternative? Leave him here with me for a couple of days. I'll show him that being a horse soldier is not quite as exciting as a little boy thinks. Put him to work shoveling stalls for eight or ten hours a day. That should get the message across. All right, Sergeant. We'll do it your way. And if it works, you can give me singing lessons, too. <laughs> you two had better move to a more open space before those sparks set something on fire. I am not exaggerating when I say her expressions and delivery are totally convincing. We could see her face relent as O'Rourke talked about Joey running away again, her skepticism mixed with hope and attraction. It's all there and you have no reason not to believe it's for real. Her name is Pippa Scott and she grew up in show business. She was in several movies in the so-called Golden Age and when television came along she pounced on it. If you look at a list of the guest appearances she did on shows like this, there's a good chance you'll be reading all day. She was everywhere. She and her husband founded Lorimar Productions, which gave us such obscure TV fails as The Waltons and Dallas. She also founded a humanitarian organization and continues to work for equality, civil rights, and human rights around the world. In the 80s, she quit acting to devote her energies to those projects, and as far as I've been able to find, she's still doing it. I'm sure that after five minutes of exercise, Joey will be glad to get back to his mother. You don't remember being 10, do you? I predict he'll outperform everybody because he has a 10-year-old's energy. You know, I can't understand why Mrs. Walker has been a widow all these years. She's certainly an attractive woman. Well, I hadn't noticed her. Well, I've always admired women with blue eyes. 
Well, they're not blue, sir. They're hazel with brownish flecks. They just look blue when the light hits them because their lashes are so long. Really, Sergeant? I hadn't noticed. As a rule, if he's seen a red-haired person with blue eyes, either the red came from henna and not from genetics, or somebody invented colored contacts a century or so before any of us knew it. And it's good to know the sergeant is so observant and vigilant. On the count, here we go. Hand one, hand two. Hold it, hold it. Donaldson. Donaldson, at the count of two, you're supposed to stand up. I can't, my back just went out. I can't do it, Garn. That old wound I got at the Alamo. Two down already, while Joey hasn't even gotten started. You're gonna put your hands on your chest, and when I count, it's gonna go this way. One, two, one, two. All right, here we go. Hands on chest, face. One, two, one, two. All in, all in. Stanley, you and Livingston carry those troopers back to the barracks. Soon enough, Joey is the only one left standing. Maybe the captain should rethink this whole thing and try to find more troopers like Joey. Joey is loving this, and his mother is running out of patience. Joey says he wants to be where the action is, so O'Rourke will drum some up for him. Attack farmhouse, a widow and kid, never! Cowies are nice, kind, sweet, gentle people. We're adorable. <laughs> I know, Wild Eagle, but it's been over 100 years since the Cowie Braves attacked farmhouse with defenseless widow and little boy. And we lost. <laughs> Knowing the Hakawis, they probably forgot to take weapons. They won't do it, not even pretend. Cost you $25. $25? How much you want to spend? $15. <laughs> For $15, can't give you much of an attack. At that price, we just stand around and throw kisses. And that's why O'Rourke won't pony up $25. He'll have to find his Indians somewhere else. The idea is to have somebody attack the Walker farmhouse while Joey is there. That should prove to Joey that his mother needs him more than the cavalry does. I have one word of advice. If you do find some Indians, make sure Mrs. Walker is in on the plot. What are you doing, Sarge? If we don't get the Hakawi to attack that farmhouse, we'll never get Joey back to his mother. We got our own Indians. What Indians, Sarge? The ones who captured the fort during the war games, Derry. If you're using your own soldiers, definitely let Mrs. Walker in on the plan. You blew it, Chief. Don't know they weren't going to bargain. We should have taken it $20. How many calls do we get for fake Indian attacks? Don't worry, crazy cat. Just tell the Braves to get ready. For what? We're going to surprise Sergeant O'Rourke. How? We attack the farmhouse. I don't think he's going to appreciate that kind of surprise, and I strongly recommend that you also let Mrs. Walker in on the plan. O'Rourke is bringing Joey to her for a visit. Joey tells her they can only stay a few minutes. She has other ideas. Now look, I know what you're going to say. No, you don't, because you've never heard a woman talk this way before. I can explain everything. Explain nothing. If I go along with your plan any longer, you'll be out of the cavalry before Joey. Mrs. Walker, if you'll just give me a little more time. I'm afraid I can't give you any more time. I'm busting you from mother back to sergeant. In true television fashion, he'll never get around to saying we're staging a fake Indian attack to convince Joey that he needs to be here. She calls Joey in and says, this is done. Go to your room and change your clothes. Now. O'Rourke can't overrule her, which is how it should be, even though she's wrong. Thing is, she doesn't know she's wrong because he's busy saying, I can explain or you're making a mistake, instead of telling her something, you know, meaningful or useful. My problem is, O'Rourke isn't any kind of academic or intellectual or professor type, so I don't know why he has so much trouble getting to the point. Maybe he's trying to do some social climbing. Go ahead. <laughs> Running deer. We've got company. Look, Indians. We better get out of here. Look, Indians. We better get out of here. <laughs> Must be Comanches. Always giving discounts. The two groups meet and recognize each other. Wild Eagle says, tell you what, since we're here, we'll do the attack for $15. Agarn says, we don't need you, we have our own Indians. All right, we'll do it for laughs. <laughs> Not gonna have many laughs here, Chief. I told him to let her in on the plan. She's been out here with just her and Joey for who knows how long. Does O'Rourke really imagine she doesn't know how to defend herself? Hey, we 
are you doing? Well, you could kill somebody. Well, isn't that the whole idea? No, no, we don't want to shoot until uh, we can see the whites of their eyes. By that time, they can see the whites of our eyes. Will you let me take care of it? Just whisper the plan to her. Let her in on it before somebody really gets hurt. The Hikawis are out of here. Even $25 isn't enough for this. Da don't shoot, Sarge! It's us! That Indian called you Sarge. Oh, yeah, well, that's a trick. He looks like Agarn. Oh, well, a lot of Indians look like Agarn. Then a lot of them must look like Duffy and Dobbs, too. I think you better come clean, O'Rourke. As usual, his propensity to go for a lie is his first attempt is blowing up in his face. And he never learns. Those men are F-troopers. Yeah, yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> and you knew it all along, didn't you? Sure he did. It's just a game. I kept telling him to let her in on it. He had plenty of opportunities. But as I said, O'Rourke's first instincts is always deception. Still, as we saw, she's realizing some things. Well, now, now wait a minute. Uh, you know, uh, we could sure use you over to Fort. But I do believe you'd be more valuable if you were stationed over here. Here? Yeah, that's right. Now, this was just a game today. But one of these days, those could be real Indians out there. Well, your mama here could just only hold them off so long, even though she is a pretty good shot. I think you're right, Sarge. Yeah, that's good trooper, Joe. You can count on me. That won her over. She understands that he really does want to get Joey back home, but he wants to do it in a way that doesn't break the boy's spirit. And there are a few perks that come with this assignment. O'Rourke will have to come by regularly to inspect his troop, if that's all right with her. That's all right with me. Uh -huh. Well, then, I think I ought to come out tomorrow night for the first inspection, along about uh, nine. Joey goes to bed at eight. Yeah, that's what he told me. Then see you around nine, Sergeant. <laughs> Aw, soon Joey might have a new dad. Wouldn't that be nice? We won't follow up on it, and she won't be back, probably because they couldn't afford to pay her enough to be a regular cast member. That's my theory, anyway. Uh, with the captain's permission, sir, I'd like to go inspect our lookout at, uh, at Mrs. Walker's farm, sir. Good idea, Sarge. Especially since you got on your dress uniform, soaked in lilac water, <laughs> your neckerchief, a box of chocolate bonbons in your saddlebag. Hey, you never know when you might have to sweet-talk a hostile Indian and ply him with chocolate. It's all for protection. Must be loved. <laughs> oh, Corporal, I just got a new set of war games instructions from Territory Headquarters. I want to show them to you. Yes, sir. I fully expect that cannon to go off. <laughs> yeah, here's that directive, Corporal. Hi, Wilton. Of the Please, Jane, leave room for the cannon. If you're enjoying this, be sure to click the thumbs up button to show you like it. If you're not subscribed yet, punch me in the face right here and get it done. And don't forget that you can become a patron and help keep this kitty fed. The link is below. Until next time.